Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Minde and we continue with Aries. We are almost on the cranial nerve. The 10th cranial nerve is a vagus nerve and it has um, it uses five nuclei. So the first one is a dorsal vagal nuclei. So this provides preganglionic parasympathetic to the mucous larynx, so viscera of the thorax and the abdomen. So the lungs, the heart, the bowel and the abdomen. So yes, and that's general visceral efferent. Then we have nucleus ambiguous that carries spatial visceral efferent, spatial visceral efferent, mass pharynx and the larynges that's supplied by the um, glossopharyngeal nerve, and latini that's supplied from branches from the trigeminal um, nerve, that's uh, mandibular division. Then we have uh, tractor solitarius, nucleus tractor solitarius. This is general visceral afferent sensation. So from sensation from larynx and soft palate, as well as the nerve to carotid body. The fourth nuclear used by Vegas is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal, again, with general sensory afferent, that's mainly um, pain and temperature. This one joins the branches from facial and glossopharyngeal nerve to form the Arnold's nerve. This Arnold nerve supplies the pain ear and the external auditory meters. So these fibers carry sensory information for pain, temperature, and touch, general sensory afferent, pain, temperature, and touch. And this 10th um, cranial nerve will join glossopharyngeal to form a nerve that supplies the odometers. And the last used by vagus nerve is the gustatory nucleus that receives taste, that spatial visceral afferent. So taste at the root of the tongue, that's arise. Okay, so um, what's the cause of vagus nerve? It emerges from the brain stem, of course, and the rootlets are usually dorsal to the inferior olive. And they're caudal to um, glossopharyngeal nerve and rostral to uh, the accessory nerve. So between the the um, sorry on the dorsal surface of the of the olive, you have from the top you have cranial nerve nine glossopharyngeal followed by vagus then accessory um, nerve. So it's caudal vagal nuclear nerve is caudal to glossopharyngeal and rostral to accessory. Then it will exit the cranium through the jugular foramen, just like glossopharyngeal nerve. And it has two sensory ganglia immediately below the jugular foramen. So you have a superior ganglion, which is smaller. That's a superior jugular ganglion. And an inferior ganglion, which is larger. That's the inferior ganglion, also called the nodose ganglion. So the superior jugular ganglion carries general um, somatic afferent, while the inferior ganglion carries general visceral afferent and special visceral afferent. The main trunk of the uh, vagus nerve descends in the neck within the carotid sheath. So it's a content of the carotid sheath. Therefore, it's lateral to the internal carotid and the common carotid arteries and medial to the internal jugular vein. So what are the branches of vagus nerve? You have auricular nerve supplying the pinna and the external auditory meatus. Meningeal nerve supplying the dura mater within the posterior cranial fossa. Pharyngeal nerve that helps participate in formation of pharyngeal plexus together with um, glossopharyngeal and accessory nerve. These pharyngeal plexus supply muscles of the pharynx and soft palate except stylopharynges that is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve and tensor veli palatini muscles supplied by mandibular division of trigeminal. So we have the general visceral efferent preganglionic parasympathetic innervation to glands in the pharyngeal mucosa coming from this pharyngeal plexus too. Then other branches of vagus, we have superior laryngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve divides into two, an internal laryngeal nerve and external laryngeal nerve. Internal laryngeal nerve enters the larynx through pyrohyoid membrane and it provides sensory to the mucosa of the larynx above the level of the vocal cords. The larynx is divided into two, a supraglottic compartment, and that's above the vocal cords, and you have infraglottic compartment below the vocal cords. So the mucosa above the vocal cords is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve. Okay. Then we have external laryngeal nerve. This is um, a nerve that supplies inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles and the cricothyroid muscle of the larynx, inferior pharyngeal constrictor and cricothyroid muscle of the larynx, while internal laryngeal supplies 
the larynx mucosa above the vocal cords. So what supplies the mucosa of the larynx below the vocal cords? Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, so superior laryngeal nerve divides into two. Internal laryngeal, which is sensory, supplying mucosa above vocal cords. External laryngeal nerve, which is motor, supplying inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles and precothyroid muscle of the larynx. Recurrent laryngeal nerve, on the other hand, carries both motor and sensory. So the motor innervates intrinsic muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid muscle because cricothyroid is innervated by external laryngeal nerve. Then the sensory portion of recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates the mucosa of the larynx, the vocal cords, also innervates the trachea and the esophagus. So this is your vagus nerve. It will give a meningeal branch to dura or posterior cranial fossa. Okay, then this is, these are the, um, the ganglia, so there's an auricular branch, okay, then there's a pharyngeal branch to the pharynx, the superior laryngeal dividing into internal laryngeal and external laryngeal. External laryngeal will supply cricothyroid muscle, internal laryngeal will supply mucosa above the vocal cords. Then mucosa below the vocal cords is by recurrent laryngeal, which is also from vagus. This is vagus. So vagus will continue downwards. So as it goes downwards, you can see it there, it will curve, a recurrent laryngeal will curve like this. So it will supply, this vagus is going to the thorax to supply the heart, the lungs, then go to the abdomen to supply the bowel and every other structure. So we have also esophageal plexus that will enter the abdomen through the esophageal hiatus, so which will innervate the esophagus. We have celiac and superior mesenteric and myenteric plexus to the bowel the gastric plexus to the stomach, the cardiac plexus to the heart. So all these are branches from the vagus. So vagus has a very wide distribution from head and neck to thorax and abdomen. You can see it. All the parasympathetic innervation is by vagus at this, uh, within the thorax and, and the abdomen. Remember, we have um, cranial nerve 3, 7, 9, 10 that carry parasympathetic information. And out of all this is only vagus that leaves the head and neck to go to thorax and, and abdomen. So we have what are called vagal reflexes that uh, comprise coughing, vomiting, and fainting. So when you irritate the skin on the posterior wall of the external auditory meters, it can cause coughing okay, and vomiting as well as syncope because bronchial tree sens uh, sensation will be activated leading to coughing. Alimentary canal sensation can lead to vomiting and uh, reflex bradycardia that will lead to syncope because vagal, uh, vagus nerve contributes to the bronchi, the GI, the alimentary canal, and the, the carotid um, sinus. So irritation of the skin on the posterior wall of external auditory meters can lead to these symptoms due to vagus nerve, uh, which is distributed to all these parts. So um, remember, we said that we have gastric plexus. This gastric plexus or vagus nerve is where branches of vagus nerve pass to the lesser momentum uh, alongside the lesser curvature of the stomach. Therefore, it goes to innervate the pyloric antrum. That's what we call the nerves of latigue. Okay, so this uh, vagus nerve is innervating the stomach. Therefore, that you can apply that information during vagotomy. A patient who has gastric ulcers, you're product, producing a lot of gastric um, acid that is leading to ulceration of the stomach. So you, before they used to do what you call vagotomy, you go and remove these uh, branches of vagus now from the region of the stomach around the ulcers. Therefore, you reduce the secretion of gastric acid. And if the acidity is lower, the ulcers are able to heal. And... If you also do vagotomy, you're able to decrease the stomach emptying and prevent terminal antral contraction. So vagotomy was used before in the treatment of gastric ulcers to reduce gastric acid secretion. Sites of lesion of 10th cranial nerve, cerebellopontine angle lesions may extend and affect the 10th cranial nerve. Hydrocephalus, where nerves will be compressed. Cerebellar tumors can affect meningiomas, tumors of the meninges. In the neck, the uh, mass of the thyroid or during surgery of the thyroid, you can injure the nerve 
we said it's in the carotid sheath, so aneurysms of the carotid arteries can affect vagus nerve. You can damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve during surgeries in the neck, such as thyroid surgery or performing a tracheostomy, esophageal surgery, tracheobronchial uh, lymphadenopathy, when the lymph nodes are enlarged, then when there's a cancer in the bronchi, when there's esophagus, they can compress the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So when you compress recurrent laryngeal nerve, compress or injure it, you get hoarseness of the voice without involvement of the pharynx. Why do you get hoarseness of the voice? Because this recurrent laryngeal nerve, remember we said that it's going to provide both motor and sensory and motor to intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except cricothyroid. So most muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal. So when there's injury, you'll get hoarseness of the voice. So in thyroid surgery, you need to remember that the arteries of the thyroid gland lie in close proximity to laryngeal branches of the vagus. So when you're doing thyroid surgery and you're like getting these arteries, you need to be able to remember that these nerves are closed so that you don't injure the nerves. So superior laryngeal artery, okay, is close to external laryngeal nerve. Then recurrent laryngeal nerve is close to inferior thyroid artery. So when you want to like get superior laryngeal artery or inferior thyroid artery, you need to be very careful so that you do not affect the recurrent laryngeal nerve and external laryngeal nerves. So you need to know recurrent laryngeal nerve is in close proximity with inferior thyroid artery. So here is your inferior thyroid artery, okay? And this is your recurrent laryngeal nerve. So they're very close. And then up here, you can see your superior laryngeal nerve here together with superior with this artery here. Okay, superior thyroid artery and the superior laryngeal nerve. So when you have lesions of the vagus nerve, you get persistent hoarseness of voice because of the unilateral paralysis of intrinsic laryngeal muscles. All laryngeal muscles are supplied by the current laryngeal nerve except a, a cricothyroid, which is supplied by external laryngeal, but all of them External laryngeal, recurrent laryngeal are all from Vegas, so you get hoarseness of voice. Then dysphagia. Dysphagia is a uh, difficulty in swallowing. So food, as food is passing through the nasopharynx and trachea due to soft palate and pharyngeal muscle paralysis. So Vegas supplies, forms pharyngeal, part of the pharyngeal plexus. So when you have lesion of the Vegas, soft palate and pharyngeal muscles are affected, so you get difficulty in swallowing. Then there's loss of parasympathetic uh, to thoracic viscera. We've said the viscera in the thorax and the abdomen are innervated by vagus. So you can have hyperactivity of vagus that can lead to hyperacidity and gastric ulcerations. Then, when you have paralyzed levator palatini muscle, okay, the soft palate may droop on the affected side and the uvula will deviate away from the side of injury. So when the vagus nerve is injured on this side, you can see this uvula has deviated on this side. This is the side of injury. So the soft palate is drooping on this side. It fails to rise, okay, because of paralysis of levator palatini muscle, okay? And then the uvula deviates towards the normal uh, side. So then the next lecture, we talk about the spinal accessory, uh, spinal accessory nerve.